Completing a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine Part 20, cleaning up the crankshaft and fitting the cylinder drains. For some reason, the crankshaft crank webs have been painted around the edge. But I don't think this is for cosmetic reasons. This crankshaft is machined out of one solid piece of steel. This is not a job that I would personally like to do. But someone's done it, and it's very well made. I started off the cleaning up process using a flapper wheel, but I needed something a bit more abrasive, and here you see me with a piece of emery cloth fastened around a piece of mahogany, which is really much better than the flapper wheel. The noise in the background is an aircraft flying overhead. I live in the middle of nowhere, and I'm quite near to an RAF base. Now I'm using the emery cloth to clean up the crank webs. I removed each of the connecting rods, cleaned up the crank web, and then refitted them with plenty of oil. As you can clearly see, there are some marks on the crank webs and I can't do anything about this. I just need it to not look as though it's been half painted. With each of the big ends on the connecting rods, I fitted them back together so I didn't get them the wrong way round. I also replaced the nuts just so I didn't lose them. At first I thought this black stuff on the crankshaft was because the piece of metal used had not been bright mild steel, but it isn't that, it's some sort of paint. If you think about the process involved of machining a crankshaft out of a piece of rectangular bar, it's quite scary. Once I completed this job, and now the crankshaft looks quite good, I put the entire assembly into a tub of panel wipe. I did this to remove any grit from the emery cloth that may have been lurking about near the bearings. That's the crankshaft cleaned up and looking good, so I sprayed it with WD-40 to prevent any rust. Then I cleaned the surplus WD-40 off the bench. Here's a special treat. This clip shows the paint drying on the sole plate, but it's really a reply to a viewer who said, I preferred the colour of the primer, but I painted it with Great Western Railway green, as a mark of respect to the builder who also painted it green, but the original green paint was damaged. If you are of a nervous disposition, I recommend that you turn off now, because this has to be the most nerve-wracking job on any miniature steam engine. It's scary enough fitting two drain cocks, but I'm having to fit six to this engine. There are some potential major problems when you do this job. In this clip I'm using steel rule to mark the positions for the drain cocks. But it doesn't compute. When the steel rule is equidistant from the edge of the steam chest, the position for the holes are not in the centre of the cast-in housing for the drain cocks. This is not a major problem to me because I do prefer my eye to measuring some of the time. I make a spot on what I think is the centre of the area where the drain cocks need to be mounted. Then I stand back and look at it and ask myself, if these were holes, would they look right? It's also very important to make sure that the drain cocks screw into this area on the cylinder blocks low down, not too close to the top. In this clip you can see that the position of one of the studs could be a problem and here I'm in the process of removing one of the studs to just get it out of the way. I'll refit it after I've drilled the hole. If you're a beginner to this sort of thing, I assume you will not be building a triple expansion engine and I highly recommend doing a test drilling and tapping for drain cocks with a piece of scrap metal. This will confirm that you're drilling the hole a proper tapping size for the thread you're going to use. These holes need to be threaded 5 30 seconds by 40 threads per inch, and doing this just gives you the feel for how much pressure to put on the tap. Over now to the drilling machine to drill the holes. I'm using a centre drill, because with a centre drill you can correct it if you put it in the wrong place to start with. Take some time to get it right. Here I've moved the position of the work by turning the handle on the cross vise, once I find the right position, I drill it with the centre drill to the full depth of the small part of the drill. A major warning here, it is essential to move the position of the piston out of the way of the area where you're drilling. If you don't do this, when you drill all the way through into the cylinder, you may also drill all the way through into the piston, which you don't want to do. It's a simple observation, and most experts will be well aware of it, but to a poor, unfortunate, raw beginner, it really is something that you may find you do. Always make sure that the piston is well away from the area that you're working on. I drilled to the full depth of the centre drill, countersinking the top of the hole slightly, 
to guide the next operation, which is the twist drill. This hole goes all the way through the block into the cylinder itself. I would normally use a 1 16th of an inch diameter twist drill for this, but this one is the next size up. And that's because the piston rings fitted to the cylinder are never going to be in contact with the cylinder at this point. Throughout this part of the job, I'm actually quite nervous. It's not making it any easier having to video it and look at the viewfinder. Small beads of sweat are now appearing on my forehead because if this job goes wrong, it's disastrous. I am not forcing the drill into the hole, I'm letting the drill do all the cutting, and I'm being very careful when it breaks through into the inside of the cylinder. Throughout this operation, I am not removing the cylinder block from the machine vise. I need these drain cocks to be in line with each other and at the same angle. Here I'm doing the one at the other side in exactly the same way as you've just seen me do at the other side. The more that you do these sort of jobs, the more confident you will become, but it's still very scary. Once again, before drilling all the way through, I move the piston out of the way. And also, once again, I will remind you to be very careful when the twist drill breaks through into the cylinder. Now it's time to drill the holes, tapping size for 532nd by 40 threads per inch, but this drill must not go all the way through into the cylinder. I've set the depth stop on the drilling machine to make this hole about a quarter of an inch deep. This part of the job is not so bad because the drill won't break through the other side and snap off. And the good news is this is the last drilling operation on this part of the block. So that didn't seem too bad, did it? But now comes the really hard part. For me, this part of the job is made more difficult by the fact that I do not own a taper or plug tap in this 5 16 by 40 threads per inch size. Note to self, time to buy some extra taps. This one is a plug tap or bottoming tap, and it's not the best thing to get started in the hole. But by treating the tap with some respect and being very gentle, I successfully cut a thread into the hole. With materials like brass, and particularly cast iron, you don't really need any lubricant on the tap. But I've chickened out here and I'm using some WD-40 just to flush out the chippings. The gods were definitely with me on this part of the job. Because not only was the job successful, believe it or not, both of these drain cocks screwed into exactly the right position without using shim washers. Paranoia has fully set in now, so I'm just testing that everything fits when I put the exhaust pipe in place and it's okay. Two down, four to go. And I really can't wait till the last one, because if anything goes wrong, it generally goes wrong on the last part of the job. I've completed the low pressure cylinder and I'm drilling the hole in the intermediate cylinder, which is also now devoid of a stud. This has always been the case on one side, the builder never fitted one. And guess what? The job was successful. I've put both of the exhaust pipes in place, so you can get the idea what it's going to look like. Obviously, when it's all assembled, the brass parts, which are just guides for setting the valve, won't be there, and the cylinders will be all together in a block of three. I must admit I was not looking forward to this part of the job, and once I'd successfully completed it, I heaved a sigh of relief. And I really cannot believe my luck, every one of these drain cocks is in the position that you see it without a shim washer. And that is it, I can stop shaking now. Stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.